What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 most pointless WWE Royal Rumble wins. Now, we've seen in the past where you would think someone is more deserving or the crowd wants a particular wrestler to be the Royal Rumble winner. And then you see that's not the case. Vince McMahon and uh, Creative have a, a different idea of who should win that said Royal Rumble that we may have wanted someone else to win. So we're going to check out some of those moments where we just, just sat there and just <clears throat> wondered what the hell they were thinking what was the point of giving this person the royal rumble win uh should be a good video appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel man we're gonna be checking out some more royal rumble related vids leading up to the 2024 royal rumble looking forward to it this year let's get right into this one man a winner is one of the most important booking decisions of the calendar year. Yep, the yep, Rumble yep. winner must be a talent that WWE believe can main event WrestleMania and potentially win the world title on the grandest stage of them all. Over the years, WWE have booked numerous nonsensical Rumble winners. Uh -huh. The Rumble winner in question was nonsensical as WWE never had any concrete plans to feature that specific wrestler in a major role and it was a case of poor planning or poor foresight on the part of WWE. Additionally, there have been times where the winner of the match has been so underwhelming and predictable yep. that the winner has greatly <clears throat> impacted the buzz and notoriety surrounding this celebrated matchup. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE Rumble wins that were completely pointless. Subscribe to uh, WrestleMania if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website, WrestleLamia.com. Number 10, John Cena, Royal Rumble 2013. When it comes to the Royal Rumble match, fans like to see an unpredictable rumble as a predictable rumble traditionally leads to negative reviews and disappointment. Yep. In 2013, it was a foregone conclusion that John Cena was winning the match. Yeah. It was heavily reported that Cena vs. The Rock 2 for the WWE title was the plan for WrestleMania 29. Yeah. The Rumble match itself was rather lifeless, and Cena, as everyone predicted, won. Yeah, we knew. We knew. It wasn't even... For, it wasn't even... It was like, what's the point of watching? We know John's going to win this to run it back against uh, The Rock. We knew it. it. It was just like, let's just get this over with. Won the match. Whilst the star power of Cena can never be denied, this was the perfect opportunity for WWE to make a new star. Yeah. The world title match at WrestleMania 29 was still up in the air, and WWE had yet to lock down an opponent for Alberto Del Rio. Seeing a name such as Chris Jericho or Dolph Ziggler win the match would have been a huge surprise. It yeah. would have changed the entire perception of the match. WWE would have then been able to book Cena to win the annual Elimination Chamber match to secure Cena vs. The Rock 2 for WrestleMania. That's 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 literally all they had to do. That's how that's how easy you could have just fixed that. You could have could have made a nice moment for a up and up and coming star or somebody else, and then you could have did that. Elimination Chamber and call it a day. Yeah, it would have been predictable, but you could have did that. At least the Royal Rumble winner would have been something new and fresh people weren't expecting. Number 9, Asuka, Royal Rumble 2018. The inaugural Women's Royal Rumble received critical acclaim, yet in hindsight, Asuka winning the match was completely pointless. Asuka was still undefeated with Challenge Charlotte at WrestleMania mm, 34, yeah. and in one of the most controversial moments of the past decade, WWE would book Asuka to lose clean to Charlotte. Yeah, when you think about it, it is kind of pointless because... It didn't. She shot Charlotte should have won that match. If you're gonna do this, it should have been Oscar. I I stand on that. It should have been Oscar. Charlotte could have taken that L or got her win back at a later time. It should have been Oscar. On the grandest stage, this felt like a huge slap in the face to everyone who had invested in her, and WWE had used Oscar's Rumble victory as a means to further elevate Charlotte come WrestleMania 34. Yeah, point Number is. Number eight, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ooh. Royal Rumble 1997. Mm. It's sometimes the case that WWE crowned the right winner of the Rumble, yet the follow-up to their win renders the victory completely obsolete. 
In 1997, WWE booked Stone Cold Steve Austin to win the Rumble matchup, and this was 100% the correct move. Mm -hmm. Austin's work as a heel was tremendous, and he was slowly ascending to become one of the top stars in the entire wrestling industry. In a unique move, Austin never received his title shot at WrestleMania 13. Instead, he received it at In Your House, the Final Four. Due to the 97 Rumble ending in controversy, as Austin uh -huh. re-entered the match to eliminate Bret Hart in the final stages, yeah. as well as WWE Champion Shawn Michaels vacating the title, WWE decided to book an all-star Fatal 4-Way at the aforementioned Final 4 event. Austin would take on Hart, Vader, and The Undertaker to crown a new champion, and the match would be won by Hart. Number 7, mm. Albert Del Rio. Well I don't know. I get what they're saying, like in hindsight. It didn't, you know, it didn't pan out to them having, well, I mean, they did end up having the match at that year's uh, uh, WrestleMania, but it wasn't because of the Royal Rumble and how things happened. I mean, it worked out. I don't know if that would have been on the list for me personally. It, it kind of, it ultimately worked out. That needed to happen, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion, for Stone Cold to get to the point where he needed to be at, honestly, especially since he was going to be feuding with Brett for the title. Um so I don't know if that should have been on the list, to be honest with you. Royal Rumble 2011. During Alberto Del Rio's early days in WWE, they truly believed that Del Rio was going to be the next big thing in the company. Mm -hmm. now, granted, Del Rio was gifted in the ring, yet he never truly had a genuine connection with the audience. WWE would book Del Rio to win the 2011 Rumble, and this was a welcome change of pace as fans firmly believed that the win would go either to John Cena or Randy Orton. Uh -huh. The problem with Del Rio winning was that WWE, and to an extent the WWE fans, were still on the fence regarding Del Rio being world champion. This therefore meant that when Del Rio challenged Edge for the world title in the opening match of WrestleMania 27, they booked Edge to defeat Del Rio, rendering Del Rio's win as a huge waste of everyone's time. Yep, when you really think about it, did it really matter that he won? <laughs> At the time, WWE decision to have the Rumble winner in the opening match of WrestleMania yeah. received vast criticism, as it was a clear sign that WWE didn't see much value in Del Rio vs. Edge World Title Showdown. Nope. Number 6, Sheamus Royal Rumble 2012. Heading into the 2012 Rumble, most of the focus was on Chris Jericho. Mm -hmm. Jericho had just returned to the company and fans were excited about the inevitable Jericho vs CM Punk collision at WrestleMania 28. Fans were firmly expecting Jericho to win the Rumble, yet when Sheamus pulled off the shocking victory, fans were stunned. Nobody saw this coming and mm -mm. Sheamus wasn't even amongst the favourites to win the match, so WWE had gone for a completely unpredictable option. Similarly to Del Rio the year prior, Sheamus would challenge the world title in the opening contest of WrestleMania, <laughs> and this was a match which lasted just 18 seconds. Sheamus would put the talented Daniel Bryan to win the world title, creating a memorable yet infamous moment. And the problem with Sheamus' Rumble win and subsequent world title reign was that WWE were never committed to presenting Sheamus like an actual world champion. Yeah. Sheamus wouldn't main event a single pay-per-view as world champion, and most of his feuds, particularly the one with Del Rio, lasted far too long and were often met with utter silence from the audience. And that's and it's crazy because him winning that really spawned the whole Daniel Bryan yes movement even further, and it really catapulted Daniel Bryan into that main event scene. So it's 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 really crazy when you think about it, how certain things play out may not make sense in the long run, but if he doesn't win that Royal Rumble, we don't have that situation with Daniel Bryan. If you think about it, that's that's the crazy thing about the whole situation. He needs, Sheamus needs to win that Royal Rumble in order for Daniel Bryan to get the push he needs from the fans even more. That's crazy. Number 5, Charlotte, Royal Rumble 2020. Booking a Royal Rumble based on backstage politics is always a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Yet that's reportedly what happened in 2020. Mm. WWE were going to book Shayna Baszler to win the Women's Rumble, yet due to collective debt, WWE decided to give Charlotte the victory. Speaking on the Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer discussed why Charlotte won the match, and this is what she had to say. Shayna Baszler logically should have won to set yeah. up the Becky Lynch WrestleMania match, yeah. and I was scheduled to win. I get why they switched from Roman Reigns to Drew McIntyre. I know why they switched from Shayna Baszler to Charlotte Flair. I think it's just a collective debt, so to speak. 
Charlotte Flair has been promised things in the past, then had the rug pulled out of her, which is funny because the perception is the exact opposite. Charlotte would then go on to defeat Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania 36 for the NXT Women's title, and this was a title win and reign that nobody asked for. No. And Charlotte being associated with the NXT title was a move that ultimately did absolutely nothing for the status of the title. Nope. Number four, Batiste. I'm definitely still on the uh, uh, Shayna Baszler. Definitely should have won that Royal Rumble. That's back when they had some type of promising idea for Shayna Baszler being this dominant uh, force in the women's division, but didn't really pan out like we thought it was. Royal Rumble 2014. When Batista returned course, to WWE this in early 2014, be on the, list. the company had set creative plans in place for the WWE legend. <clears throat> Batista was going to win the Rumble and challenge Randy Orton for the WWE world title in the main event of WrestleMania 30. The problem was that fans had zero interest in seeing Batista in nope. a stagnant and tiresome babyface role, and fans had firmly decided that they were going to stop at nothing until they made Daniel Bryan the, the number one guy in the company. This all led to one of the worst rumbles of all time, and the match was received so poorly that it factored into WWE coming into the realization that Batista as a babyface simply wasn't going to work. Mm -mm. Following his rumble victory, Batista would keep his WrestleMania spot, yet Daniel Bryan would be added to the match in a welcome move. It goes without saying that Brian should have won the 2014 Rumble. Yeah. The fact that WWE was so stubborn with Batista's babyface presentation was a testament to the problems in their creative department at the time. Number three, Lex Luger, Royal Rumble 1994. The WWE were always hesitant to crown Lex Luger as their top babyface, oh. and this was never more obvious than in the 94 Rumble. Luger was a logical favorite to win the match based on his prior on-screen presentation, yet fans had organically decided that Bret Hart was the guy to carry the company into a new era. In a move that has never since been replicated, WWE would book Luger and Hart to win the 94 Rumble match, and as a result, both men would challenge for the WWE title in two distinct singles matches at WrestleMania 10. Mm. Luger would fail in his attempt to become WWE Champion at WrestleMania, whilst Hart would be successful, and would close out WrestleMania 10 as WWE Champion. Aluga being a co-winner of the 94 Rumble was ultimately pointless. Yeah. It would have been easier <laughs> if WWE gave the sole victory to Hart. Number two, Ronda Rousey, Royal Rumble 2022. Ooh, On the yeah. surface, the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble felt like an unpredictable rumble that anyone could have potentially won. However, when just before the show, it leaked online that Ronda Rousey was returning yep. the match, it became inevitable that the baddest yep. woman on the planet was winning the whole thing. Rousey. Yeah, if she was, if she's going to be in the match, she's not losing. We knew that. We knew that. Oh my God, bro. It was just like, well... Here we go. His in-ring work in the match was lackluster, and it was hard to tell if she was supposed to be a babyface or a heel. Following Rousey's win, she would challenge Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 38, and the two would have a dull encounter, which Rousey surprisingly lost. Lost, yeah. WWE had booked Rousey to win with any concrete creative plans in place, which was very frustrating as a viewer. If Rousey had returned during the build-up to the Rumble and explained her character <laughs> motivations, then perhaps a win would have made sense. Yeah. And number one, Vince McMahon, Royal mm. Rumble 1999. The 1999 Royal Rumble was predominantly built around a showdown between Stone Cold Steve one. Austin and Vince McMahon. That's a fair one. The two entered into a match at number one and two respectively, and everything outside of any interactions between the two presented as inferior and irrelevant in the match. Mm -hmm. In a shocking turn of events, McMahon decided to book himself to win the match. He was a non-wrestler who had now won one of the most prestigious matches in WWE, and fans remained baffled as to why yeah. McMahon believed that this was actually a good idea. Thankfully, McMahon would never make it to WrestleMania 15 as Austin would eventually earn the spot to challenge The Rock, meaning that McMahon's Rumble win had no purpose other than to create a further obstacle for Austin on yeah. the road to WrestleMania. But there you have it, folks. 10 W. They could have did something else <laughs> when you really think about it. He didn't have to win because it ultimately, they knew the result was going to still be Rock versus Austin, but I... <laughs> I remember watching that as a kid, and I was so pissed, bro. It worked. As a kid, I was pissed. I was so mad that Vince screwed uh, <laughs> Stone Cold once again. I was so mad. So, so mad. But, like I said, in hindsight, when you think about it, it doesn't really make sense. It, it was it was kind of convoluted but it still worked in the grand scheme of things because it was a different time period you can get uh, get away with 
shenanigans that make a lot like no sense at all like doing that nowadays with with how social media is people would definitely not be cool with that that's like triple h or tony khan being in like some type of royal rumble situation and then they win it what especially if they're not active wrestlers what no it, it would not work in today's time but back then stuff like that was kind of common comment down below let me know um some other pointless royal rumble winners if they weren't listed in this video that you felt like in your opinion it doesn't have to be the popular opinion it could be your opinion exclusively to you where you felt like that person should not have won the royal rumble in in just however you felt about it you can give your reasons down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel road to 150k and i'm still getting the speed of youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking in with me see y'all next one peace